Welcome to Praying for Miracles with Carol. Today we're going to talk about a subject that has come up so much recently. And I suppose it could be a sign of our times when people are being bombarded with so many things from so many different directions. And when they pray, it just doesn't seem like God is hearing their prayers or God isn't answering. So what do you do? Do you wonder, did God hear me? Does God care? Why doesn't he answer? That is the subject that we're going to talk about today. What to do when God is silent. first thing we have to realize, and the most important thing we need to realize, is that God is a communicator. God is our Father. God cares about you more than you will ever understand or could even begin to comprehend or realize. God wants to communicate with you. So if that's the case, then why is it that sometimes he seems silent? It has nothing to do with God and everything to do with us. When we understand and learn how to hear God speaking to us, how to hear his voice, how to know without a shadow of a doubt it is his voice. Then we open up the direct line of communication that he has designed for us to be in constant communication with him. There is no time in under the new covenant when God is silent. Now how can I say that with such assuredness? Because when you realize that the Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit, He lives there. He is never leaving there. It is a constant companion. You have the precious Holy Spirit living within your spirit. You, the only thing you have to learn to do is to Open up that channel of communication in your spirit. Recognize it. And you will recognize God's voice, which is not like any other voice we will hear, because it is not the voice that we are hearing in our mind. It isn't the voice that we're hearing in any other aspect of our lives, whether it's from a book we read or a sermon we hear, or anything else. It is God's voice that always is confirmed with his word that we hear in our mm -hmm. inner man, our innermost being, our knower, K-N-O-W-E-R, that we know, that we know, that we know, that God has spoken directly to our spirit. So rest assured, when you learn to tap into hearing God's voice in your spirit, there is no doubt, there is no question, there is no concern. God speaks to us 24-7. All we have to do is learn how to listen. So how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is to know that God never can go or contradict anything against his word. His word is yea and amen. God cannot lie. So when you get that inner voice that you are hearing from your knower, your inner person, and you know it is God, confirm it with the word. Confirm to be sure that it is what you are hearing. Because very often, 
I've heard people say the most outlandish things and they'll say, well, God told me that. Well, God, I'm sorry, but God doesn't speak to you like that because it goes against what his word is teaching. So the first thing I want to address is, do we have the right to ask God for something in particular? Because sometimes our mind will keep us from asking for something because we think, well, maybe it's not right for me to ask that my son be come to know Jesus. Maybe it's not right for me to ask that I be healed. Maybe it's in God's will or his timing that I'm not healed. And maybe it maybe I'm supposed to be poor. Maybe I'm supposed to be sick. Maybe I'm not supposed to uh, find my true mate for life. And our minds start asking and rationalizing all these things that we may wonder about which is in the realm of our natural person, our natural mind, our natural being. But God speaks to our hearts. He speaks to our innermost being. This is where we must learn to communicate with him. And so we will know when we get the verses that, we, that will um, confirm what we are asking that is in God's will, there will be no doubt. That doubt is removed. That confusion is removed because confusion and doubt are not from God. Confusion and doubt are from the enemy. And God's word can't lie. So if God says that I have come that you may have abundant life, you can expect abundant life. I have come. It is my desire that you know me that you know me intimately, that I live and dwell in you, that I have died for your sins, that you are free from sin, that you are free from guilt, that you are free from condemnation. Find the scripture verses in whatever area you are struggling with and wondering if you are hearing God's voice. And when you find those verses, pray those verses back to him. Thank you, Father, that your word says that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I thank you that my children will come to know him. I thank you that your word says that because of the anointing that is on me from the Holy Spirit, that my children and a thousand generations into the future, as Isaiah tells us, will know you. I have the right to stand on the word and the promise because you have spoken it. So it is my job to hear what you are saying to my heart and not to worry and fret and be anxious and wonder about what I might be hearing elsewhere. Let's take, for example, and apply it to healing. When I was told I had two years to live, and without a hysterectomy, I would surely die. It was that voice from my inner person that welled up, the voice where the Word of God dwelled, the voice where I knew that I knew that I knew, my inner knower, that God's Word was yea and amen. And if God's Word promised me healing, then I can take that Word to the bank and cash it. And so I did, and I told that doctor that he was a liar and that I would not be dead in two years without a hysterectomy. And I found the verses that I needed to confirm what God's word tells me, that I have healing because of the stripes that Jesus took upon his body for the 39 major diseases in this world. I have healing because Christ said he has come to heal and to restore. I have healing because his word has promised me abundant life. I can thank him. And so my prayer then turns from one of petition to one of thanksgiving. I thank you, God, that your word says. I thank you that you have promised me healing.
I thank you that I do not have to worry about the cancer that is in my body because you have come to heal and restore. And I give you the praise. I give you the glory. And I thank you in advance for what you are doing. And yes, 14 years later, I walked into that same doctor's office and I was totally not only healed, but I was pregnant. God's word is yea and amen. It doesn't deviate. It doesn't fluctuate. It is yes and amen. When we learn to stand on the word that he has given us, which is confirmed within the word, the written word, the rhema word spoken to our heart, that's what we take to the bank. That's what we know is truth. It is not what people tell us. It is not what we wonder about. It is not the articles that are written that say, well, you can't hear God's voice because there's sin in your life. You will never, ever, 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 ever find that in the Word of God. That is a lie. Recognize it as such. Christ dwells in your spirit. You are righteous because of his righteousness dwelling in you. Another thing that I want to talk about along these same, same line is a question that people ask. Is it Satan's voice or is it God's voice that I'm hearing? Well, first of all, because the Holy Spirit dwells in your spirit, Satan can't dwell there. He cannot communicate to you from there. So when you know that you are praying the word and hearing the word, which is confirmed in your heart by, by knowing that, by the confirmation that you get from the Holy Spirit, confirming the word of God, you can bank on it. It is not Satan's voice. Satan has no place in you. Satan has no place in your spirit. Satan cannot communicate to you through your spirit. You are born again, and behold, all things are become new. Just as your spirit has become new, all things that you hear from your spirit are new. They are not going to be lying to you. Another question that people ask, well, what about if the timing isn't right? Do you remember in the Old Testament, this is just one of many examples, but Daniel was, had prayed, and he was wondering why the answer was taking so long. And when, that, when it was all over, 21 days later, he waited. And he, he was, 21 days is a long time when you need an answer immediately, and you're urgently waiting for that answer. And God told him, when you prayed, I heard you. When you prayed, I sent the answer. But because of what was going on in the heavenly realm, the spirit world, which we knew noth he knew nothing about what was happening, because of what was happening in the spirit realm, it took 21 days for that answer to reach Daniel. But it came. And that is the point here. God will always answer because his answer is already there. His answer is in the word of God. And Satan cannot confuse you in that respect because he cannot talk to you in your spirit. He only can lay doubt and fear and confusion in your mind. And that is not where God communicates with us. God communicates with us in our spirit. And the same thing with the timing. It is God's timing. We don't understand it sometimes. The 14 years that I had to wait before my baby was born, I didn't necessarily understand it. Now, in hindsight, it's amazing the things that I learned, how much healthier I became, how I began, became a nutritionist as a result of my search for answers and to find in my healing and to live a better, healthier life. Even though I had to wait 14 years to get the answer, I knew in my spirit it would come. I knew that God's word provided the answer and that God's word cannot lie to me. And I knew it was the voice of God that I was hearing.
And I knew it was the timing that was in his hands, not mine. It didn't matter if it was 14 years. At the time, it did because you want it to happen. But when we know that God provided the answers, that he has given us the yes and the amen, that his word is true, that he cannot lie, that we can take those promises, and no matter how long it takes to see the manifestation and the fulfillment of those promises, it will happen because I am holding on to the truth of God's word. And the question that we sometimes ask is, can God hear me when there's sin in my life? Realize deeply that your natural man and your spiritual man are two very different things. Your spirit man, your spirit person cannot sin because we're Light dwells where the Spirit of God dwells, where Jesus Christ lives in your spirit, in your heart. Sin cannot dwell. Darkness cannot dwell. That is God's word. And so if you are concerned that there is sin in your life and that is deterring you from getting an answer, that is a lie. Because there is nothing under the new covenant mm -hmm. that will confirm that. Nothing. Hear that loud and clear. Christ dwells in your heart. The Spirit of God himself dwells in your heart. Your heart is pure and righteous before him. Not because of something that you have done or didn't do. Not because you didn't go to church enough, or you didn't pray enough, or you didn't read your Bible enough. It has nothing to do with what you have done or did not do. It has everything to do with what Christ has done. He has come into your heart. He has swept it clean. He has made it pure and holy, and his spirit dwells there. So if you have sin in your life, that is in the natural man. That is not where you hear God's voice. You, and I'm sure we've already determined that in this video today. We do not hear God's voice in our natural man. We hear it in our spirit man, in that inner knower. And God lives and dwells in our heart. He communicates in our heart through his precious spirit. And so any of these concerns that you may have, rest assured that God hears your prayers. He, he, he has answered your prayers. Those answers are in the word. Take that word that you have received from him, the written word of God. Apply it to your life. Apply it to your spirit so that it will well up and get bigger and bigger and exciting. Knowing, just as I knew, I would have a baby. Yes, there were times when it, it hurt to wait. There were times when, when I wondered if the answer would ever come. And immediately I knew in my heart that that wasn't right. Because God had already sent the answer. That answer was in his word. Uh, it was my job to believe it, to receive it, and it would happen. And it did. And if you have taken my course on the, at the Biblical Nutrition Academy .com, and the course on prayer and how to get answers to your prayer, you will get excited absolutely excited to know that God answers in many different ways, but he always answers. And the miracles in that course will make you jump up and down. But those aren't miracles because I was special or that I did anything special. Those are miracles in my life because I dared to believe. I dared to believe that God's word is true. I choose to believe that. And that's the difference. We can choose not to hear God's word, or we can choose to hear it. We can choose not to listen, or we can choose to listen. We can choose to hear what the world would tell us, 
or what well-meaning friends tell us, or what an article tells us that we read, or a sermon that we heard, or we can choose to hear what God's Word says in the matter. Thank you so much for listening today, and I ask that you please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Ring the bell. You know what to do. You don't want to miss any future videos. And I thank you for listening today to Praying for Miracles with Carol. And I want to hear your testimonies too. I love it when you email me your testimonies and tell me how God is revealing his word anew to you because of these videos that you are hearing. Thank you.